pandemic obviously affected so many parts of daily life, um, one of them being travel behavior. So when people had to start teleworking instead of commuting, all the shops were shutting down. During the pandemic, people were taking both directed and undirected trips. Directed trips are your normal trips, going to work, going shopping, going to a museum. Undirected trips are different because they have no destination or the destination is ancillary to the travel. So they're more like taking a jog or a bicycle ride, going on a walk, going on a joy ride. And these type of trips um, really increased during the pandemic because there were no destinations really available anymore. Uh, during the pandemic, and especially during the first lockdown, I just uh, went everywhere by foot. I thought it was very cool to walk around the city because it was so empty. And uh, for sure, the lockdown increased uh, mm, my motivation to take a bike because uh, before I used to, for instance, take more public transport or Uber. I love the moment where um, in the beginning of the confinement all the cars stopped driving and you could feel the air getting better. This also encouraged me to walk more through the city and take my bike more and be less lazy to take the public transport because obviously taking the metro felt a bit weird because you're packed on the metro with a lot of people. It was a good way to you know cleanse the brain and um, just some music on and walk for a long time and it was very helpful. Undirected trips are mostly active. Almost 96% of, of the trips that we saw were with active modes. So this improves health and well-being. Uh, people said that it removes negative feelings, like relieves their tension, relieves their stress. And enjoying the scenery is also something that people gained from undirected trips. Actually, the pandemic has been a very long period, but we've seen actually that the, many people uh, use that period for testing new mobility services or just taking their old bike with their kids and so on. And this very short trend actually became a major trend over the long time because now we, we realize actually that, the, that, that people, they, 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 they stick to those new habits and we've seen a dramatic fall in the public transport use because of the health issues. And this is what we see actually, not much commutes, a lot of uh, bicycle and walking and a significant drop in public transport use. Over 50% of people started taking more walks for their directed trips as well as for their undirected trips. About 35% of people started taking more bike rides. Car use dropped by almost 90%. It was really pretty strong. Um, and then there were 31% of people who did not change their public transit use. Yes, many things have been encouraged, especially regarding infrastructure, uh, because uh, they, they were new cycling tracks built in the city, but also some very small things like adapting uh, red lights. One other thing we've seen is that the bicycle tracks, they've been more used by citizens, which is very positive. We've also seen initiatives like Critical Mass, which is a movement of cyclists taking public space as their public space and getting uh, on the road to show that there are many cyclists in the city and uh, that uh, we need to take uh, them into consideration. What's positive is that we really see that this movement is uh, increasing and uh, it gives some political pressure. It's not necessarily against car drivers and against cars. We need a new public space management and try to, to find a new balance between all these uh, usages.